Always start with a smile. Got to start the day with a smile, right? Start the day with a nice, uh, t- a, a nice Talmud Zoom shear. And then you come out with a smile, even if you've done battle with your good friends, either um, either for good or for, well, it's all for good, but there's uh, sometimes a bit of a punch up in our group as we love. So we didn't, we, we didn't overdo it with a text today because we're rounding off, but you said some very, very deep things. Uh, I, I've never heard you say that about the word emet, alaf mem tough. So maybe we can start with that, try and relate it a little bit to our Gomorrah or a lot if you can, and then come in with the acher because we, that's where we got cut off on our Zoom. Right. Okay. Let's do that then. So um, this Gomorrah has discussed a number of essentials, very, very uh, profound uh, piece of Talmud. Um, they all actually are, but this one's clearly so. It's always good to keep in mind that there are three important components of truth. If a person wants to seek truth, and truth, of course, by us is of essence. Moshe Emes, Vesoy Raso Emes, Koirach and his gang are singing from the depth of the earth. Moshe, Moses is true, and his Torah is true. When we make a blessing on the Torah, we say, Asher, Bachaban, we call Amim, and Asal, Anu, Teiras, Emes. Thank you, Hashem, for giving us the Torah, which is a Torah of truth, of Emes. Mm-hmm. Um, emet, in modern Hebrew, what is Emet? What is truth? And what's fascinating is that truth is made up of three letters in Hebrew, an Aleph, a Mem, and a Tav. And that is a hint to us that it needs three components. Truth needs three components. And each of those is hinted at through the three letters. The first letter, Aleph, is of course very obvious. It's the high floating letter without sound. It's the spiritual letter. It's a connection to the Elohim, to the Kale, with the Aleph of godliness. Mm-hmm. And the Mem, the middle letter is a letter which hints, which symbolizes the mase. Mem is always the letter of doing. If you want to make a present tense verb, you usually either add in a vowel or a letter mem, right? For example, uh, daber or da, da, davar is, becomes the, act, the person who is performing this, the medaber, the speaker. So the mem is the letter of doing and that's the human being and the third one is tav which is tevel which is the world and so truth has three components the elokus the connection to god the mase the connection to the doer to the human being and the final one is tevel is the world is creation If you're missing one of those, you're you're lacking MS. It's not true. It's devoid of veracity. It's false. And many of us sometimes lack one of those three components. And what's even more concerning, what even more um, we have to be vigilant of is if we learn Torah, if we learn life, if we view the world or um, our, our, our mindset is lacking one of those three, we are looking with false glasses. We have not got a view of the MS. And so when we learn or when we think and when we engage and we interact, have we got a one eye on God? Have we got an eye on our fellow person? And are we looking towards the world? That's basically a theme which flows through this Gemara and through all of life. That's That's... It seems so simple, but when you look around and you see that the world element seems to be the one probably most that's missing, where you apply everything to the world, it, it, be, it, becomes, it becomes very kind of uh, uh, narrow. It be, you become a narrow version of the truth or certainly a lacking version of the truth. How does that, how does that relate to the Gemara we've been learning? So the... The, 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 <laughs> a couple of days ago, we were trying to define the tzaddik. 
And we were trying to see, does the tzaddik have a portion in this world or tzaddik have a portion in a heavenly world? And remember, I got uh, hit on the head by a cricket ball because, you know, I, 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 I misread, I forgot the truth. The truth is that a person who cares for his fellow, his or her fellow person, and who has a relationship with God, that's got the elephant, it's got the mem, but ain't got the tub. There's no MS there. It cannot be a tzaddik, cannot have, have be called so without feet on the ground. There must be feet on the ground. However, if I've got my feet on the ground and I'm a Greenpeace world conservationist and I worry about the world and I'm into wildlife and I'm into lots of uh, what seaspiracy um, and all this uh, concern for, but I don't have a connection to my fellow person. So something's going to go wrong there. I'm, I'm, I've got a very small piece of truth. I'm only worried about one of the three elements. And so it can work the other way. It can be that I actually am a genuine and caring uh, creation and part of the cosmos. But if I don't see it in perspective of how does it impact on my fellow person, so I'm also going to be involved in a lack of truth. And it can work the other way. A person who's completely worried about God, yeah. always God-centric. I'm in the world of Aleph. And I don't worry about my fellow person. And I certainly couldn't care about the world. So then I've got also a very slender and small attachment to truth. I wonder, I wonder, how, I wonder how that slipped through the, the, the net with Judaism. Because every single thing you've said is in, is in the Torah and required of us in basic halacha. You see it in basic halacha of take take care of your the, the Shabbat um, uh, obligation to take care of your animal before yourself is a is a, is an animal rights banner. It's the holiest day of the week, and Hashem says, "Well, make sure your hamster is okay. Make sure he's okay, okay." And then the, in terms of the world, it's 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 clear that we've got to take care of the world because He said. I created it to take care of it. I, I, I'm not sure. If we, we must see that in halacha somewhere in terms of the world. We must do in, in, in trees, in nature. There must be. It must be somewhere. I just don't know top of my head. And of course, yeah. man, of course, man is a given. It's just amazing that historically, somewhere along the line, Jews have forgotten that and are not combining the three. Um, where does that leave us with Acher? Right. Okay. So there's lots to speak about. I was, I was, I was seeking for a uh, uh, Segu teaching. Seg segways, right. hmm. Yeah. But let's stick to let's 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 try. We're trying to keep this short, right, Dave? We, trying to, to get them long is not difficult. To <laughs> keep them short is a little bit more challenging. But he has the he has the the where we wanted to get to. Perhaps with this we could close this this uh, this this portion. You know, the sugya this uh, particular section of the Talmud. Where's Ache with all of this? Yeah. And today we had such a, a lovely debate on whether Putin and whether Biden are to be admired or to be despised or to be to criticized or to be accoladed and complimented. And, and you know what we're working out, are they actually Zeh uh, Umat Zeh of the Tzaddik? Are they the Zeh Umat Zeh of the Russia? That was our debate. Are they actually using each other for themselves? Are they a bunch of ta are they a pair, pair of takers? Mm -hmm. And they're in it to see what they can get from the other. Are they competitors or are they colleagues and are they uh, working together um, as partners? And you know what? I, I didn't say it, but I think it's worthwhile saying we have to make sure that we have a good eye and we bring out the goodness in Biden and the goodness in Putin. Because we've also got a choice of how do we view them. Let's view them positively. Let's let's raise up the banner of wow, this could be good, as opposed to this was you know disaster. And that's my own opinion. I think we have to be channeled into Zel Umat Zeh of Tadikim ourselves. We're also there at that summit, but we're there as the commentaries and the a voice of what can go out into the world of that. And how powerful is the social media that we can actually give it a positive voice. And I think that that is 
a beautiful um, responsibility that we should play. But back to the, uh, the, the, the where we want to get to is Acher. Acher doesn't have any interest in any of this whatsoever. He doesn't have interest in Rabbi Akiva for himself. He doesn't have interest in Rabbi Meir for himself. He doesn't learn the debate. He's not interested. He's quoting it for you, Rabbi Meir, will need to know what your Rebbe said. Me, I don't need to know. You know why? Because in the world, in the, world, in the mindset of Acher, the way we get to the Gan Eden is not through politics. For Acher, politics is a dirty word. For Acher, he's in another realm. You know how you get to Gan Eden with your friends? You know how you get to MS? Is to remove yourself. Remove yourself completely from all of this. Putin, Schmutin, Biden, Schmiden. It's all irrelevant. It's got to be belong to a different realm. And the way to achieve it is perhaps by meditating, perhaps by being alone, perhaps by shochling. I don't know what it is. Ask Acher. Some other method of getting to that destination. Yes, he remained a Jew. He also wants a better world. He also wants a utopia. He also wants a Gan Eden. But he has left the arena. Elvis has left the building. He's not interested in the band. He's not interested in the music. He's not interested in the crowds. He's interested in getting there some other way. And you know what? Says Rabbi Akiva, says Rabbi Meir, says the Talmud, says the Jewish tradition. That's not the Jewish way. The Jewish way is not to get there the other way, not to be otherly, not to be disinterested, not to be disengaged. Mm. Our role in making this world a better place through the mindset of the tzaddik who's the giver and through the empowerment of each and every person to be a player in that and part of the team is to be involved, is to get involved, is to be engaged, is to have a role to play, is to put your coin in, place your um, tag, put your finger up, put your hand up, and to be part of it. Mm -hmm. Acher chose to be part of it, but he didn't, he didn't engage. He's, he's doing it. He's working through the back and he's going to get us there. Unfortunately, that's not the Jewish way. Why do you think, not, why, do you, why, why do you think Acher quoted Rebbe Akiva here? What, what, he, he, what we've learned out of Rebbe Akiva was he quoting him as to, as a, as a, as a, like a, like a snub, as a kind of uh, look at this, Look at this uh, tactically halachic, uh, mental arithmetic Rebbe. Why did he feel? Because if, if Acher wouldn't have said, um, Amarlo, Acher said, we assume it's Acher speaking. Acher is speaking the words of Rebbe Akiva that we've spent two, three weeks drawing out the greatness. Why did Acher quote him? So thanks for thanks for asking that question, Dave. That is that is so beautiful and it's so massive. And the answer is that I would offer you is that even though Acher is Acher, but Acher is Jewish. Even though Acher is going the other way and he's trying to get to a better world, not through the engagement with the politic and not through engagement with day to day and the news and the media, and he's quietly trying to do it through his own meditations and his own personal spiritual method, but he still has an eye on the other way. He's still keeping a track abreast of what you, my, my brothers, my other, the other other, which is you guys, how are right. you doing? You know, you also have a role to play and how beautiful that is that, that the Talmud, Rav Ashi, Rav Ashi and Ravina and those who composed this magnificent um, encyclopedia of the human being mm. said, you know what? Acher hasn't actually left. He might have mm. left the building, but he hasn't left the people. He, he didn't. He didn't get. In, he didn't get in his Cadillac and drive away in his uh, fancy suit. He didn't get. He's on hovering. A, he's hovering outside in the lobby. 
he 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 wants to hear from his friends who do tap into the media. What what happened with Putin and what happened with Biden and did, did the Jews come out okay? And right. was it good for this? You know, was it good for the human human being? He doesn't engage with, it, but he is he does understand that it has a role to play, but he just feels that he's got to do other. And we understand other, and we talk about other, and you know, other is a reality. But we have to know that from a Jewish tradition, we go with the Rebbe Akibas, we go with the Rebbe Mayers, and we recognize that there is another. And you know what? We view the other one also with a Zeh, Umat Zeh, Asai Elohim. God made people who are other. Let them not exclude us. Let us not exclude them. And then even if we can include the other, so then we're on the right track. Then we're the true tzaddikim, because if he's talking about Rebbe Akiva, and he's talking about the Rebbe Mayer, yeah. so don't don't get rid of him so fast. Don't count discount him so quickly. Just tell him that we feel that the main thing to do is to engage, and we will listen to you, Acher, and we will hope one day that you too will join the ranks of people who not only include others but actually engage in the world as well. We want Acher to stop being just a Zel Umad Zeh, but also to be a Tzaddik. No, sorry, not only to be a Tzaddik who wants to contribute, but he also has to be a Zacha, a Tzaddik that Zoyche. And the way to be Zoyche is to build a Gan Eden, not to aspire to a Gan Eden, but to actually be involved with our fellow human beings in building a better world.